Hey everyone, this is Connor Mead with the Calculation Center here again with another video in our Linear Algebra series. This video is about finding a basis for the kernel of a matrix. Now, some people don't call this a kernel in their courses, they'll call it a null space, um, but it's the exact same thing. Um, here I just written out the definition of the kernel to make sure we're all working off the same base. Um, if A is an n by p matrix, that is to say that it maps rp to rn, so that is to say it has uh, p different columns and n different rows, then the kernel, or the null space, of this matrix, denoted cur A, uh, is defined to be equal to the set of x in our input space inside rp, such that when we put them into the matrix A, we get out the zero vector. So it's the set of stuff that gets killed off by the matrix A is some way it's often described as. Now, the kernel is a subspace, that is, it's a vector space contained inside of rp, so we may be interested in finding a basis, and that's what this video is about. So I'm going to show you how to do it here. And the general idea is we're going to try and solve for the kernel, basically, identify every single element that's inside the kernel, and then we'll find a basis um, from there. Okay, so let's look at this matrix here. We've got the matrix A equal to 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 3, and 3, 5, 6. And the idea here is we want to find out all the elements in this matrix. And to do this, we just write down A applied to x1, x2, x3, and set it equal to 0, and we'll solve this equation. And we'll see that we're matching the definition for the kernel here. So when we find all the x1, x2, and x3 satisfying this, um, we'll have all elements in the kernel. And hopefully we're used to interpreting this as a system of linear equations by now, so we'll just jump straight to the augmented matrix form. So we write down 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 5, 3, 3, 6, and it's equal to 0, 0, 0. And we just have to solve this system of equation. And recall, of course, that this is the x1 column, this is the x2 column, and this is the x3 column. Um, so let's mark in our pivot, 1, and we'll use this 1 to turn everything below it into 0. So we go 1, 2, 3. 0, um, 0, minus 1, uh, minus 1, and 0, um, minus 3, minus 3. So that's one, that's one pivot, here's our next pivot. But clearly that last row is going to be sent to 0 by adding, uh, subtracting off 3 copies of row 2 from it. So you go 1, 2, 3. 0, I'll normalize this so it's 1s, and this becomes 0. That's just me dividing across by minus 1 here. Okay, now we're done with forward substitution, so we do it, go back to back elimination, and this just sends us to 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. That's some subtracting two copies of row 2 from row 1. Now from here, we just solve, turn the turn this back into a system of equations because we're done with our pivot algorithm in the sense that we've put in all the pivots that we can. Um, so solving this we get uh, x1 plus x3 is equal to 0 and x2 plus x3 is equal to 0. Um, and just to note, the way we're going to go about this is the general strategy for solving a system of linear equations like this when you have infinitely many solutions and got these free variables um, the variables associated to non-pivot columns, so in this case this is a non-pivot column, um, and it's, a third, it's also associated to the x3 variable, that means x3 is a free variable, and we want to write all the non-free variables in terms of the free variables. It's kind of obvious here, but we just write x1 equals minus x3, and x2 equals minus x3 as well. So therefore, um, if we have an element in the kernel, it looks like uh, minus x3. So what I mean by that is uh, if v is inside the kernel of a, this implies v is equal to, let's just tidy this up a little bit. This implies v is equal to minus x3 minus x3 x3 for some x3 for some x3 in R. 
And therefore, what we can say here is, therefore, the set of the, well, let's write out kernel of A, is equal to um, the set of x3, well, minus x3, minus x, let's call them just x now, I suppose it doesn't matter, such that x is an OR. And this is clearly equal to the span of minus one, minus one, one. And so the kernel, so this implies that uh, minus one, minus one, one is a basis for a kernel of A. So we've got a one dimensional kernel here because it, the basis only has one vector in it. So therefore we don't have to be too careful about this. We just need to find a vector in the kernel and it's bad, and it, that will be a basis for a kernel. Now, a little more of an interesting example. I've made a little more of a difficult one over here. So let's just uh, guess like this. So I've got this matrix here. It's a four by three matrix, and it maps in it maps R four to R three. Um, now I've gone through the calculations here. So this is just generally we do the same thing where we solve uh, A applied to x one, x two x3, x4 equal to zero, and that becomes this augmented system of equations, and eventually we get down to this point. We eventually reduce it as much as we can, we put in all the pivots we can. I'll just uh, about show it just to make sure you guys get a chance to look at it if you want. Um, pause the video here if you want to go through it yourselves. Um, but we end up with this system of linear equations at the end. Now, and remember what I said last time, the aim is to write the pivot variables, so this is the x1 and x3 column, we want to write x1 and x3 in terms of the non-pivot variables. So that means x1 and x3 should be written in terms of x2 and x4. And to do that, we just manipulate this equation. x1 is equal to minus 2x2 plus x4. And x3 is equal to minus x4. So therefore, um, if v is in kernel of a, v is equal to... Um, well, x1 is equal to minus 2x2 plus x4. Um, x2 is just x2. x2 can be anything because it's a free variable. x3 is minus x4. And x4 is just x4. So this isn't as obvious now, right? Because this is not spanned by just one variable. We can't write this easily as a multiple of a vector. So the idea here is you need to split this up into bits that have x2s in them and bits that have x3s in them. So you write this as minus 2x2, x2, 0, 0, plus uh, x4, 0, minus x4, x4. Okay? And we can just see that we've just literally split up each component of these vectors into x2 and x4 bits. Um, and then we just write this as uh, x2 times minus 2, 1, 0, 0, plus uh, x4 times... Uh, 1, 0, minus 1, 1. Okay? And then this implies that the basis, or rather, I should say, basically it means that these two ve these two vectors here form a basis. So this implies uh, minus 2, 1, 0, 0, um, and 1, 0, minus 1, 1 are a basis for... Uh, kernel of A. Okay? Because, again, this the, the fact that every vector in the kernel of A can be written like this means that these two vectors span it, and these two vectors are clearly linearly independent. And I'd recommend checking that yourselves, because it really is the best way to understand why that, this is the case. Um, but that's pretty much the methods for getting the kernel of a matrix. You can do this for any size matrix. Um, so hopefully this all made sense to people, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.